Abby, you like to see some planes? Skymaster provides you with um, these guys. So, in my case, I got uh, the Kevlar fuel tank upgrade. And so what that comes with is these clunks and this assembly that you can use to uh, attach to the tank. And then these look like brass rods, four of them. Uh, obviously there's four because we have two tanks. What I want is, that's the vent, and you can see it, it bends upward to the top of the tank, so when the tank is full, that's the vent. And then you have your, your clunk and your flexible tigon. So what this needs to be able to do is sort of search in the tank, no matter what orientation the tank is, but not get clogged. Um, so it shouldn't be too flimsy that it can kink up. Um, so what I'm gonna do is basically replicate this. Mm -hmm. Bending these tubes is gonna be a little bit tricky, but I'll just take my time and sort of get uh, my screwdriver in and just slowly advance it. These guys tend to be fairly thin, so I might just order the BVM stuff, which is slightly thicker, but I'll start with this and bend it and see where I get. And, uh, the second thing I wanna point out is the reason for this uh, plastic tubing here um, is because when you bend these it's hard to get it through this small hole especially once you have all the hardware involved so you can only bend it so far because inserting it is going to be tough and so you make up the rest of that distance with the uh, fuel tubing so that's that's why that's there anyway so I'm going to get that done and then come back and show it when it's all set so here's what I've wound up um, in terms of the uh, sort of fuel setup for my tank. How I ended up with this is I inserted, I got my tank, uh, inserted this in there and sort of did a dry fit. And basically what I want is I want my clunk to be able to reach the bottom of the tank and then to be able to search in the tank. So I would just like flip it and you can, I, I wanna hear that clunk hit the bottom side of the tank. You kinda want enough brass length so that this has less of a chance of coiling over itself, um, um, but still enough so that it can sort of move around. And so that's what I wound up with. Okay, so right here we can see what that hardware looks like. You've got your screw, you've got the top washer, and I've inserted the bottom washer. You can see it there. And uh, this bottom sort of washer, whatever you want to call it, has a thread in there um, that is going to catch uh, once we put uh, this guy through the top. So what's going to happen is... So that guy is inserted like that, and then the screw is going to go in the middle, and it's going to go and grab onto this uh, top plate, bottom plate, screw is going to grab onto the bottom plate, tighten this and pinch this, widening this so that it's, it fits uh, in the tank in this hole right here. Uh, pretty. So I've inserted the uh, pipe assembly into my tank and my vent is inserted in here and it angles upward towards the top and then my um, the other line with the clunk is on the is on the bottom side and the clunk just goes in the bottom um, as you as I tighten this uh, screw that's in the middle here um, the rubber expands and right now you can see it's a it's a fairly nice tight fit and so I'm just gonna tighten that until um, when you fill fluid in, it doesn't leak through um, through here, and I know that's going to be that's good. My enough. second tank, and uh, the stuff that goes in there is already set. It's been wire wrapped, secured so it doesn't come apart. Clunk is in place, and so I'm going to go stick this in here, 
and that together with the first tank will be complete. This is the BVM stuff that I'm going to be using. Um, you've got the uh, Kevlar tank hardware package and the high flow fittings. Um, these have a little bit of a, a large diameter here but as you can see I just uh, put it in there. I'm holding it with CA glue um, just so that the metal is in the center of the disc and then I'm gonna use epoxy um, and I'm thinking I'm gonna go with this guy to hold um, both the metal to this G10 sort of washer and then hold this entire device onto the tank and same goes for the vent so that's what I'm doing with my tanks I'll get it done and then I'll show you what that looks like so while this piece cures I actually decided to use uh, this epoxy for that and while that cures I have gone ahead and drilled a hole on the top of my tank for my vent and what I used was a 316th bit so that guy it's about 4.77 millimeters in diameter and so that's gone on top here I have used alcohol and I've cleaned that surface and so I'm gonna go ahead and put epoxy on these threads and gently screw it in and let that settle so here you can see sort of the epoxy and I'm just gonna thread it in slowly into the hole making sure that I don't actually plug the vent. Okay, so there is the vent glued in place and I'm gonna anchor it sort of pointed just a little bit to the side that way because I want the piping to come down this route. Um, this guy is almost dry ready to be handled um, and the next step is basically going to be to position that here tape it in place and then uh, glue that disc in, uh, in so position. So I'm almost ready to epoxy this but you can see I kind of cleaned and roughed the surface up a little bit I'm going to do the same on the back um, just because I want to make sure that I have both chemical adhesion and mechanical adhesion so that's important so there we go and now I'm gonna epoxy this and let it cure overnight So it's been uh, almost uh, 16 hours and here's the end result so this is the BVM um, uh, hardware that I've used on this tank and my clunk and my line are ready and you can see what that looks like. Uh, I have my safety wire to secure both the clunk and um, sort of this intake uh, uh, device here. Um, and so that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, how I'm going to mount my tanks. Um, and basically, I made this sort of wooden plate. Um, and these screws allow both of these to come off and the idea is I'm going to epoxy these to the front of the tank um, and then set that in the jet and uh, I'll show you what that is going to look like. So the, here's the tank and here's my wooden block and what I plan to do is epoxy these uh, flat surfaces to the tank like that and you can see my markings uh, based on fitting it in the plane how that tank should sit and ideally what's going to happen is once this is in the plane and this is glued I can take off the tank by unbolting these screws and these uh, mounting blocks plus the entire tank are able to um, come out of the plane. So the setup's going to look like when it's sitting in the plane You can see the tanks there and how the block is going to mount to uh, the bottom of the fuselage and the sides of the 
thrust tube. So, get that done now. Tank. As you can see, I have epoxied uh, some pieces of wood to the tank using E00NS um, air epoxy. And so what this allows me to do is slide the tank in and then using these two mount points we got two screws that go in and those secure the tank um, to a wood former that I have glued in the plane. I'll show you that now. So right in here you can see the wood formers um, and they're labeled one and two and you can see the holes which the tank mounts onto. So in order to mount my top tank, um, I would have preferred to move this as far back as possible, but the cover that comes over here doesn't allow you to move the tank much further back anywhere because sort of the cover tapers both that way and this way. So I mounted my lower tank as far back as you can see and I just cut through the thrust tube for that. And you can see what that looks like and the extra brace that I talked about in the earlier videos is going to be a second one that goes around this one. But anyway, back to this. So what I'm going to do to mount the second tank is I'm going to glue a piece of wood to the back of it, epoxy it, and then I'm going to use screws to actually drive that to the bottom. And that's how I'm going to secure the tank. Um, in place. For how I'm going to mount the second tank, um, I epoxied a piece of wood to the back um, using E00NS air epoxy and um, the plan is basically that this piece of wood is going to mount onto these holes. So you can see how that's going to work. Mm. And then those screws basically get uh, cinched down to this block of wood. Now I did make sure that the length of these is less than the length of both of these combined. So I'm going to cinch it down and see how well it works. Final product, top tank secured via that. And on the front, so that's what it looks like. Um, I still need to figure out how to support this top tank because I, I don't like that that flex so I'm probably gonna add some extra supports on the bottom so I figured out how I'm gonna mount my uh, uh, second tank and as you can see here I added a uh, piece of wood that looks like an L and I've epoxied it in place and there's a tiny screw hole at the front and I'll show you how this all fits together. But first, let me show you the other side. So, here's the um, attachment that's gonna lock uh, this tank in place. And this is what I came up with. And basically, we have these holes on the bottom. So there's one here, and there's another one there. And that's how this secures to the side of the fuselage. So I'm gonna mount this and show how this locks and or secures this tank in place. Okay, so here's how this all goes together. Uh, you have the bracket, which is this guy, and this sort of gets seated on, there are some wooden blocks on the side. So there's one block right here, there's a second one right there, and so this goes in here, and those attach to the sides here. I'm just gonna tighten. I'm gonna touch the second one. And so here's why I like this, because now this uh, beam right here actually supports the fuselage on both sides and also holds the tank from the top. So what's left is a little tiny screw that goes in the front here to just make sure the tank doesn't move around. But then that's it.
Okay, so I pulled out my tanks. And the reason I did that is to show on video what the plumbing looks like. So we have our bottom tank. This is the main tank and this will go to the UAT. And then the vent from the bottom tank feeds the uh, inlet, the, the output, the fuel inlet and out for the top tank. And then from the top tank, we go straight to our vent. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, nothing fancy. One thing I'd like to point out is make sure, um, at least I like to do this, is that you can see all of my tube connections have the tie wraps and that way I know that these tubes are not gonna uh, come apart. So just extra safety. I want to make sure that everything stays where it's supposed to be. So um, that's that. Um, the reason I use tie gun here instead of this Viton tubing is I just I had some of that and for the vent this is more a little bit more flexible so I like that but nothing could have stopped me from using uh, this material but not a big deal. So tanks are gonna go in now and uh, yeah plumb the rest of the jet. My assistant as always. Hi Baba, are you helping Dada? Hey! Hey! I gotta have this kid in here every now and then when I'm doing my thing. It's the only way I can get to do that and that, among other things. So I am grateful for my assistant, even though he seems to be busy doing other stuff right now.